So when you look at, at transportation today, it's really amazing. You can get from A to B just so quickly compared to, you know, 100 years ago. But the cost of that, in the U.S., 33,000 people are killed every year. To put that in perspective, it's the leading cause of deaths for people between the ages of 4 and 34, right? It's more dangerous than cancer, it's more dangerous than gun violence. When you look worldwide, the number is even more scary. It's uh, 1.2 million people killed every year. 90 plus percent of that is human error. And so if we can bring in technology that's always paying attention, that can see what's going on around it, that never gets distracted, this is a huge opportunity. This is one of these kind of 10x kind of opportunities to save lives and make the world a better place. People have been thinking about self-driving cars basically since we've had cars. And then along came uh, the DARPA Grand Challenges in the early 2000s. I and a number of the folks on the team had taken part in those. Uh, and they were really excited. They were kind of like the Woodstock for robotics. And then in 2008, Sebastian Thrun, who was at Google, and started to talk with some of the leadership here and started to think about the fact that self-driving cars is really a computer science problem. And it's, it's this huge computer science problem that'll have a big impact in the world. And thus, it's exactly the kind of problem that Google likes to solve. And when we kicked off the project, the question was, is this even possible? Could you actually have cars that drive themselves out on the road? And so we set for ourselves two audacious goals. Uh, one was to drive 100,000 miles on public roads. To put that in perspective, this is an order of magnitude more than anyone had ever driven before. Uh, and then the other was to drive 1,000 miles of really interesting places. After about a year and a half, we were actually able to complete that challenge. And that told us we actually had technology that could work. Today, one of the things we're, we're most focused on is making the car drive naturally. Right? We want the car to be on the road. We want it to have all the aspects of the best human drivers. We want it to be courteous. We want it to be defensive. But we want it to drive in a way that you can expect how, how it will behave on the road because that makes you safe around it as another driver. If you go back to the DARPA challenges, the vehicles driving around really were robots. They would accelerate hard. They would brake hard. With our vehicles today, they have to be good for our occupants. They have to be nice and smooth and safe, and that has to be very kind of naturalistic. As a human, it's really easy to get uncomfortable. You've probably experienced this when somebody else drives for you, and you sit in the passenger seat, and they hit the brakes late, or they hit the brakes too early, and you get a little uh, tense about that. The other is from the outside of the car. We want it to feel natural for the other drivers, because when it's natural, it's safe. Uh, and so our vehicles move very smoothly on the road, they kind of pay attention, and if anything, they're kind of more courteous and more defensive drivers than, than normal drivers. When self-driving cars are a reality, it's, it's going to be amazing. Right? Imagine never losing someone to a traffic accident again. Imagine a world where you get in your car, it takes you where you want to go, and then you get out, and you don't have to search for parking. You just you know leave it and it goes off and helps someone else get where they're going. Uh, imagine cities where parking garages aren't there, where that land has been turned into, into homes or turned into parks. It's just going to be amazing. Uh, it's going to be an exciting place.